you, my friend, need a better math teacher. That's the reason you're struggling on ACT math when you should be getting a 36 instead. Hey, it's Amy, and I got a perfect score on the ACT and SAT math sections, each with 10 minutes to spare. I'm a private tutor and got all my students a 33 or above. What's crazy is that these videos are on the internet with tons of views, many more views than I have, yet they have slower solutions. So today we're gonna go over the questions in this video where I have faster, smarter solutions too. Let's go. These are the most common math problems. So if you can get these right in this fast and smart way, then you'll raise your ACT score by so many points. The greatest common factor of 18, 45, and 81 is this YouTube channel solution is to use guess and check, but you should avoid guess and check whenever possible because A, it could take more time because you have to go as many as five processes to see if one works. And two, because you have to do more calculations instead of solving it in a straightforward way, it's easier to make mistakes. And careless mistakes are the worst reasons to miss points. For greatest common factor, I write out these three numbers in a row with some space between them and write this L shape. So this is a more efficient way of finding greatest common factor or least common multiple. First, I'm just going to find a small common factor between these. So I see that three is a common factor. How do I know that? There is a trick. Basically, you know that a number is divisible by three, like 18, if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So 1 plus 8 is 9, which is divisible by 3. 4 plus 5 of 45 is 9, which is also divisible by 3. And finally, 81 is also divisible by 3 because it also has a sum of digits equal to 9. All we do here is do 18 divided by 3, 6. 45, 15. 81 is 27. And we can divide by 3 again. So we get 2 five, nine. There are no more common factors between them. So the greatest common factor between 18, 45, and 81 is just the product of the numbers on the side. So it's three times three, which means the answer is nine. If the question was asking, what is the least common multiple? It's also super easy because that is simply the product of all these numbers outside the L. So that equals three times three times two times five times nine. What is the value of log base two of 16? So this person's solution is to do log 16 over log two in your calculator, but you really should not use a calculator for this kind of problem. This is why students have so much trouble with time on the test because they're doing things that take way longer than they should. Log base two, of 16. How I like to think of this is this bottom number here. Whenever you see log base something of a number, you want to convert it and switch the question in your head such that it's easier to understand. This means two to what power equals 16. So as you see here, you just put this bottom number as whatever number it's raised to the power of x, which is what you're trying to find, that equals 16. Then you just see 2 to what power equals 16. So 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16. So your answer is 4 because 2 to the fourth power equals 16. You should also be already familiar with powers of 2, powers of 3, powers of 5, and so on. That's why this problem, number 28, if you think of it in the right way, in the easier way, instead of using the calculator, you can get answer C within two seconds of reading the problem. How I think of this problem when I see it is I switch the question to say two to the what power equals 16. It's easier for me to understand that way. I know it's four and I circle C right away. And this saves me tons of time. This YouTuber here is also telling you to memorize to solve this problem. And as always, we don't want to rely on memorization. We want to use understanding of what log base even means. Okay, what is the product of the complex numbers quantity negative 6i plus 6 and quantity 6i plus 6? This YouTuber solution is to FOIL it out, which is fine, but again, we want to use the faster, smarter solution. 
since we're under that time crunch on the ACT. We want to build a math sense. And here the math sense is that these two items we're multiplying together look familiar to a plus b times a minus b because the only difference is this minus sign right here. a plus b times a minus b is very convenient because that simply equals a squared minus b squared. Once you get more familiar with this, you don't have to write every step, but I'm gonna write every step so you can see it. I would change the order of how these are represented and see that this would be the same as a squared, which is the six squared, then minus b squared. b here is 6i. We have 6 squared minus 6i squared. That equals 36 minus 36 times negative 1, which equals 36 times 2, and it's 72. And that's faster than foiling. Watch, so if you foil this, then we have, first of all, negative 36 minus 1, and then plus this negative 36i plus 36i plus 36. And we see that these two cancel out, which is the whole reason why this equals a squared plus b squared. So we don't want to waste time and foil it out because we already know that these two things are gonna cancel. The time crunch on the ACT is one of the things students struggle the most with because if you have all 60 problems with unlimited time, I bet you could solve all of them. That's why it's important to find the fastest and easiest solutions, like what I show you today. A rectangular prism is 21 feet tall and has a square base with a width of eight feet. What is one fourth of the volume of the figure in cubic feet? They say that we first do the volume, which is length times width times height. So yes, eight times eight, because it's a square base times a height of 21. But what they don't do well is that they actually multiply this whole thing out to get 1344. But this is a useless intermediate number because the result we want is the volume divided by four. So instead, the result we wanted in the first place was eight times eight times 21 divided by four. There's no reason to get the actual volume. We just want the volume divided by four. We want to cancel these. The top becomes two times eight times 21. And you can put that in your calculator and it's so much faster and you get 336 you save some calculator clicks, which means you save precious time, and all that time you save adds up. And because you clicked the calculator fewer times, that means you had fewer chances to click the wrong thing. And students often get really stressed under the time pressure and will make mistakes. So if you can solve problems quicker and be calm and relaxed while taking the test with the smarter solutions, you're going to score so much better just because you actually have time to think to the best of your ability. Remember that at the end of the day, you don't wanna rely on memorization. It's about problem solving skills. Problem solving skills will make you be able to solve any problem on the ACT, even if you haven't seen it before. If you rely on memorization, you will look at a problem you haven't seen and think, oh no, I haven't learned this. I haven't memorized anything about it and you won't be able to solve it. But if you have the mindset that you're using problem solving skills instead, then you're gonna be able to get a perfect score so much more easily. The rest of Five Academy's solutions in this video are decent because they're pretty straightforward questions, but I hope that showing more efficient ways of solving these problems helps you level up your skills and overall just the mindset to think like a mathlete, which is how you can get the best score possible. Give me a like and subscribe for more math tips. And if you're applying to college soon, here are common app hacks to level up your application and be more IB worthy. See you next time.